Hey, Jeremy Cook here, and it's January 28, 2022, and I have fulfilled the, um, on my JC Pro Macro Kickstarter project, I've fulfilled some of the early uh, assembled projects, but now I'm actually getting into the kits, which actually makes me a little bit nervous because you send the kits out and, well, you know, who knows, you know, I haven't really tried it out. I've, I've tried it out on the early assemblies, but I haven't tried out actually what's in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a sample package for somebody, you know, based on, you know, based on an order or maybe just a general order, and then I'm going to put it together. This will show you kind of what goes into it, kind of what the parts you can expect to take out of it. And also it will, it'll be kind of an instructional video for how to actually put it together when you get it. So hope you enjoy. This is the JC Pro Macro 2 and I'm Jeremy Cook. So enjoy and we'll get started. So first things first, I wanted to kind of go over my assembly station. I might go over this a little bit in more detail later, but, but I've kind of laid it all out so that I've got kind of an assembly kit based on these three things here. So I can just kind of pick and place out of these three bins. And then on the bottom, once that's done, I can pick and place out of this for the final assembly. So just one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these. I can just go through, take them all out, put them in the box. And then for the options, I've got the a enhanced keyboard, the key switch plate, uh, the OLED screen, and the um, USB cable. Also got these standard um, knobs, which looking back on it, probably the better thing would have been to have add-ons, not so much options, because you know, it's kind of nice. I can put just play, take, 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 and then put it all in. And then I can put my options in there. But when I've got the actual options, rather, you know, either or rather than just adding on, that makes it a little bit more complicated, it seems like. But anyway, I will go over that in possibly another video. But this video is more about putting together, assembling, and putting together. So I will assemble it right now. So for this fake order, I'm going to say somebody ordered everything, all the options. You've got the OLED display screen the extra special aluminum knob, and the key switch plate. So basically I'm going to first of all fold up my box. There you go. It actually took a little bit of work to figure this out, to how to kind of, um, which boxes to use, etc, etc. Um, uh, and I just say, okay, I need one of these boards, one of these Pro Micros, need a, a base plate, Look at that with the JC Pro Macro 2 engraved in it. That's pretty cool. Need eight key switches, key caps, and the components kit. Now the components kit, I actually included some extra screws and stuff. So you know, no matter the option, you'll actually get a little bit extra um, just because it'll accommodate any option. Figured that was a little bit easier way to do it. You know, if you find some extra screws or even, even this extra header, this four pin header, I included that in every everyone so you know you can use it for something else buy your own OLED screen etc etc so put that in there and right now you've got the standard kit in this case I've got a extra special aluminum knob so I'll put one of these in there as well as as well as a, a uh, allen key because that's pretty cool uh, key switch plate one of that as well and the OLED screen so that's good too so at that point I've got everything everything in here um, I would seal it up and ship it out that's you know in theory that's what I would do so a couple days later I checked the mail and oh look what it is it's a JCPM2 JC Pro Macro 2 for you which is me which is Jeremy Cook because I didn't actually send this in fact if I was um, if I was receiving it I wouldn't be very happy with Jeremy Cook because there's no sort of packaging material in here. There's not like a sticker or a business card or anything like that, which you'll probably receive with this. But, you know, this packaging material, you got to have that in there so it doesn't shake around. Nice thing is I recycled that from, mostly from PCUBA, the people that made this. So, you know, it's nice to keep this around if you're going to ship something else out. Helps the environment, I guess. Helps your checkbook. So that, that's good, too. So anyway, I've got all this stuff. Let's see. Got that. Eight keys. OLED screen, because uh, I ordered that, that, uh, components kit, base, uh, key switch plate, uh, yeah, that, that, PCB, and that. Oh, and I, I got a, got an Allen key, that was nice of Jeremy Cook to include that, because, you know, I might have one, 
I might not, who, who really knows. What you will need to provide though is a screwdriver, uh, probably some clippers. Man, I love these Nipex clippers. You don't have to have some that are this expensive you can use. You know, the, the, the Play-Doh will generally get the job done, but you gotta wear safety glasses apparently. So, or these, these are called engineer pliers. These are pretty nice too. Pat, uh, Pat Regan recommended these to me. Gotta be honest, I like the Nipex a little bit better, but look, I mean, these are both pretty expensive. So anyway, use your own judgment. And of course you'll need a, a soldering iron. I've got this TS-100, which, which I like pretty well. And you'll have to provide your own uh, solder, solder, which is, uh, this is by Sane Smart. It's some lead-free solder, which, which I like. And yeah, that should be, should be all you need. Also one of these things to dip your soldering iron in is helpful as well. Um, and while you don't need these necessarily, on the GitHub page there's also some, some fixtures that you can print out if, if you like. This one helps you with the, the Pro Micro board. This one helps you with um, putting the PCB together. Um, this one is like for a PCB without the switch plate, that could be useful too. And this one is just for the EC11 encoder. It's a really uh, small print, or it's a easy easier print, so you could use that. If you use this, you don't really need it. But anyway, there's several options on GitHub if you want some help putting this together, you can print those out. But you don't actually have to. So the first thing you'll probably want to do, maybe the easiest thing, is to take care of the Pro Micro board. And so this Take this out, um, you know, you're, you're authorized. I authorize you to take this out. Anyway, so take that out. And yeah, you'll notice it doesn't come soldered, so you gotta solder these headers on. Head Soldering them on the bottom, you know, I can, initially in the build, I, I thought about, actually had, had it where it would come up from the top, kind of, uh, what did I call that, like a, I don't know what I called it, a re reverse mount or something, but <laughs> anyway, this is going to be a, a lot better, a lot less confusing, so you just put it on, on the bottom like like you would normally. Um, to solder it on there, you can just solder it by hand, that's fine, or you could use one of these breadboards, it's kind of a, a jig. It's nice to put it in there just kind of lightly and then whatever, solder it. If you plug it all the way in, some, sometimes some of the pins just pop out. So. I don't like to do that really, but I don't really like either way. So I made this jig, the Pro Macro solder jig. Well, Pro Micro solder jig, but you can use it for a Pro Macro or really whatever whatever you want. So put the headers on there, and then slide this on there to line every, slide that on there to line everything up. Went ahead and turned the fan on so it could blow some of the solder away, keep it from getting into my lungs so much. You can probably hear that. Another thing that's helpful, you know, depending on your eyes, is some, um, I guess they call them cheater glasses, you know, things that make the, just a little bit bigger. You don't have to have it, but it could be useful. I like using them for a lot of soldering operations. It can be helpful to solder one end, then the other. You know, just kind of make a nice outline of it. If you want, or it'd probably work the other way too. And then just fill in the gaps. So other thing that I was thinking about, before you even do this, before you even solder it on, it might not be a bad idea to plug this into your computer, make sure it recognizes it, and even program it. If you do that, you can make sure the Pro Micro is, is working correctly, and that way you know you haven't you know, messed up anything along the way. It's good to, good to know things are in a correct state before you modify them. Not that I always do that, not that I, not that I expect most people will do that, but I think it's the right thing to do. We'll take out the JC Pro Macro main board. We'll go ahead and open this up with the engineer pliers because they're nice and solid and I really like them. Although I like the Nipex a little bit better, Pat. So looking good. These, these have all been checked at the, at the factory at PCB way, so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, every one of my early assemblies that I did 
they turned out fine. So I, I think these are, you know, pretty happy with that. So at this point, you may be tempted to solder on the, the key switches and stuff, but the next step that you really want to do is open up your components kit and solder on this socket. You, you can do it the other way, but it's just a little bit easier because everything is free at this point. So take that out. And now you want to be careful with this. You want to make sure you solder this on the back side where all the all the LEDs are, all the all the components are. And I'm not sure that it matters, but you'll just want to have the notch up to the front, up to that side. So put that back on there. And I could probably use a jig for this, but I've yet to make one. Again, you kind of want to make make a little outline first. In this case, I'll do these two. Do the other side. It's looking pretty good. Again, you'll want to put it on the back side, not where the JC Pro Macro is listed there, but on the side with the components, the other components. First of all, if, if you got the key, the key switch plate, you need to remove any protective covering on it. It's not too bad, although if you just cut your fingernails, it might be a, might be a problem. Looking good. And then you can see there's a little pip there, so let's just pop that out. Pop that out with your screwdriver. So, we will, first you put the plate on, and then you wanna insert all these correctly in the through holes. And you may have to bend the wires just a little bit to make sure they're gonna fit in correctly. Yep, looks, uh, looks pretty good. Now the thing is, you got to solder on the back side, so you got to figure out how, how to put it, go from here to there to flip it over. So what's useful is if you have like a piece of cardboard or something, you can use this as kind of a jig. So I found this piece of MDF, um, medium density fiber board. And what I'm going to do is take it like this, take it, flip it, and then look at that. If you don't have that key switch plate, might be a little bit, um, might want to pay a little bit more attention to the alignment of the things. Or you can use, you can use one of the jigs, which should help. Everything's lined up. Let's go ahead and solder everything together. So once you have that done, including these two that the camera may or may not have cut out for, you can flip it over. This plate could, could probably go on and off, but you really don't want to mess with it too much. The next thing you want to do is get into your little parts bag here, get out your EC11 encoder, and two buttons. So yeah, I got the one button that dropped out there and the second button there. The cool thing about these buttons is when you press them in, they kind of just kind of stay. Oop, not that way. Got to make sure they're aligned correctly, so just press them in and look at that. Nice. And we'll press that in as well. Yeah, so if you don't mess with them, they should just kind of stay there. And then this, this is probably one of the, maybe one of the most uh, difficult parts of the operation is making sure you can get this into all five holes, or really six if you include these two holes that are just kind of for mounting. They do fit, just might take a little bit of finagling.
There we go. Oh, they got it. All right, so we got that right there. So now you want to solder it. This is very much offset from the keys. So this is where a jig really comes in handy here. You can use this. I'll probably go this over this in more of a you know, manufacturing centered, kind of a setup centered video. But without that, you might want to make up something yourself to do it. Um, I'd, you could probably poke a hole in cardboard for this. You could print something. But what you could do, you could take a, a roll of filament, just place it in here so it's got a place for the thing to kind of go go down. Uh, I gotta make sure you soldering iron nozzle on. Nice thing about this EC11 is it turns off when it hasn't been used for a while, so that's that's a good thing. But if you don't expect it, then it can be a little inconvenient at times. Look at that. So the next and final step from a soldering standpoint, if you purchase one of these OLED screens or if you're gonna get your own, let's see, take that out. And the cool thing is these come, at least the ones I get now, they come soldered on there. So you could just solder them directly here, but that's kind of not great. What I included was a four pin header. Now this, this is again, this is another situation where the jig comes in nice and handy. But if you don't have one of those, I guess, I guess the best way is just to kind of solder one of the leads on and then kind of try to position it. It's not, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do, but it's not that hard either. So we'll just use the, the box itself as a jig. Why not? So you can kind of gob the solder on there let it cool down a little bit, and then that kind of fixtures it. So that's not that's not so bad. Then you can do the other other three fairly easily. Kind of some weirdness going on here with it coming off. So I'll go ahead and trim that with the engineer pliers. I feel like for every other job, these are probably a little bit better than the Nipex. Man, I love these Nipex. They look so, so awesome. And they can really get in there to tight spaces. We'll go ahead and move on to the mostly mechanical part. Let's get out your, your base. Besides getting the EC11 encoder in, this is probably the, you know, maybe the most, I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just a little, maybe not evident to begin with. So what you need to do is plug in this. Just plug it in just a little bit to this hole that's it's pushed out. So you push that in. Yeah, now, this needs to be pushed in a little bit more, so what you do, just piece by piece, so oh, put the pressure on there, pressure on there, there, and there, and you, know, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit more if you want to be sure, so that looks good. Uh, these holes here you can poke out if you like, they were actually there so that the idea was that if you wanted to, you could put these mode and uh, reset switches on the bottom and come up from the top with like a, well, this isn't a paper clip, but like a paper clip or something. I, th I think that would that would work, but you know, I haven't wanted to do it, but maybe, maybe somebody will. And then why not take this paper off? Yeah, you might not want to cut your nails before you receive this directly before you receive it. I mean, you know, practice good hygiene. Don't let them get crazy, but a little bit, uh, little bit of extra on your nails, not, not a bad thing necessarily. I've been learning how to play the baritone ukulele and apparently, apparently ukulele players really grow their, grow their nails out to kind of a, maybe some, some of of an extreme length, which I'm not gonna do. Gotta have your limits, I guess. So put these, these um, bumpers on. Like that. All right, so the base is done. Looking pretty good. Woo! -hoo. Let's see, and then you wanna line it up, line everything up like this. Put it on. And then. Put the long here, long here, long here, long. Long here, long here, long here, and the short here. 
if you weren't using this, you would use short, 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 short. Again, you know, if you've got some leftover screws, which, which you will, you could use it for some sort of accessory that you design or add on. Who, know, who knows? Maybe there'll be something later that I come up with for it. Or you too. I'd, I'd love if you, if other people came up with accessories for this. Screw that in. It doesn't have to be too tight. Got the enhanced, extra special knob. Take that off. This the set screw is out a little bit. We'll just, yeah, so you can see that. Got to take that out just a little bit so it can slide in easily. And you got to make sure it lines up with the flat here. I, I guess maybe it would work otherwise, but definitely you want it lined up with the flat. So one, one, one last part about this, if you've got the, um, we'll actually need to solder this so you can select negative for the bottom and then positive for the, for the tops to match up with, with OLED screen. So ground and, and VCC. The top two control these as well, so that way it's got some versatility depending on what kind of screen you want to use or some other accessory. So I forgot to do that earlier. You just want to go ahead and put a little dot of solder right here so that it can be ground. So ground and then get that to positive. And yeah, there you go. So that's negative goes to the bottom, positive to the, the top, or not the top, the second one. And then it'll plug that in, your pro micro board in. So put that in on the bottom, push it. Oh, almost forgot, you need some actual keys for this, or key, key caps. So you wanna just put that in. All you have to do is just push it, and it just goes right in. These uh, translucent key cap caps are not, they're not bad. They show the, the colors that from the um, LEDs, LEDs, but they're not, you know, they're, they're a good compromise for everybody. At the same time, you might want to use different types of key caps on here, which you definitely can. You know, you could salvage them from an old keyboard. You could salvage them. You could order them. They're Cherry MX compatible. So if you find them, you could put them on there. I, I look forward to seeing what people have done I even saw somebody print, print their own keycaps for the uh, original one of these, the JC Pro Macro 1. So who knows what people will come up with. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be awesome. So we'll go ahead and plug this in and see how it works. If you didn't get the enhanced rotary and encoder knob, you'll get one of these kind of basic knob. And instead of using a set screw, you actually just have to press that in. And it, it's kind of a tight press, but you need to go ahead and make sure you align this with the flat, align things with the flat. Let's just zoom in here. We'll just make sure you can see it. So it's got kind of a kind of a flat area here. Got to align the flat with that and then push it in. It takes a decent amount of force to do that. You can also 3D print your own or whatever, whatever else, buy another one. So the possibilities are endless. Hey, Jeremy Cook here. And you can see here, I've got my JC Pro Macro 2 hooked up, attached to my computer through the USB port. And you can see here, I can turn the volume up and down, up and down, that's nice. And then I can go to random mouse jiggler mode, which can keep your computer awake, which is helpful as well. And then I've got a third default option as of this writing, which is Final Cut Pro. I won't, won't mess around with that too much because it might do something with my, my streaming setup or my recording setup here. But anyway, that's the very basics of it. Um, programming wise, I'll go over that in another video, but just, just to keep a, a note here, after you program it the first time, what you'll need to make sure to do is when you hit the program, the upload button, make sure to hit the reset button right when it says programming or uploading. So right then, and after that, you should see it blink, blinking on the bottom. Timing here is pretty critical. So it'll take a few seconds to boot up because of a delay I put in there. And after that, you can mess with that and you can do some other stuff, tab through different tabs in Firefox or Chrome, I believe. And you've also got a thing for a fan here and then lights on the bottom, which is kind of, kind of cool. So there's a lot more I can explain to this and the hardware and the software, but for now, this video is, should be about done. So, you know, stay tuned for next time and hopefully I can show you more about this. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook with the JC Pro Macro 2 signing off.